Meso, unless there's anything else, do we want to get into a few fan questions? That's what I was about to say. I was like, if yeah, you guys have I'm, anything I'm else. Good. No, I got nothing else. So. Yeah. yeah. All righty. No, cool. Let's do it. In that case, we have got a pretty good assortment here of some fan questions, some of which we may have already asked, but I'm going to comb through them and see. Uh, we'll probably alternate, trade off asking these. So first of all, I think you already answered this one, but I'll ask it again so you can give it just a quick restatement. By plural, if you were given more time to develop any Bionicle 2015 character, who would it be? Dolly. There you go. Awesome. All right, that Dolly. was quick. Yep. <laughs> Next question. We'll, we'll go in general name order. Yeah. All right. Go, LJ. Uh, from Morendex T17, if there was one fight scene that you could increase the duration or grandeur of, which one would it be and why? Mm, well, I, I think, I mean, poor, we, we talked about this before as well. Lord of Skull Spiders didn't really get a lot of, uh, of, of, <laughs> yeah. of time uh, to be a bad guy, which was, was kind of a shame. We could have gotten a lot more out of that. Uh, and, uh, and probably if I were to go back, I'd, I'd, you know, extend that fight because I don't know, it's, it's, he's still a great He's still a great character, a great monster. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I would like to expand on that. He's, he's Rumor still is he'll appear in book buddies. two. He may be in book two because it's called Revenge of the Skull Spiders. So we'll see. Ooh. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Kai. He's back. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> Honorable Master. <laughs> Honorable Master, is. Uh, he asked, if you... If you were put in charge of Bionicle 2015, would you do anything differently story-wise or otherwise? Oh, by the way, that was a mistype for his name. His name is just Onowa. His title oh, okay, got put sure. in there. All right. Nice. <laughs> well, um, oh, that's, a, that's a hard question to answer because obviously, I mean, when, um, when you're a writer, you're greedy. I mean, mm. you're really greedy. You want... Because your your <laughs> your job is to to make up stuff that isn't there already. Uh, that means that you can make up anything. So as a writer, you just start off saying, "Well, I want to control the world." I mean, there's you, we all want to rule right. everything. But but then we start meeting constraints, and that's when we begin to be challenged. And it's in the challenges that we have to show our true creativity, which is also actually a point in storytelling. Is you know this is why our protagonists or our, the heroes have to face. Uh, challenges and have to face, you know, adversity is because that's when they show their true self. So uh, a story writer begins to show his true self in the limitations that he's getting. So even though you start off saying, I don't want any limitations at all, really, you don't begin to show your worth as a storyteller before you get limitations. So uh, it, it's it's a difficult question to answer because really, you know, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to make it a, a a, a, a nine-hour saga where I can tell you know every detail of the story <laughs> myself, and you know without uh, without trying to to point any fingers, but that's probably what went wrong with the with the with a series like The Hobbit. Uh, I mean, mm, it, it, you right. had a, a, a rather small story, and 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 but you also you had the money and you had the uh, the people involved in it that you could blow it up to anything you wanted. And all of a sudden you have a, a, a three times, two and a half, three hour movies. Uh, right. And, and there just was not enough story to fill that. Uh, and, and I think limitations would probably have made that. I mean, um, it, <laughs> it's, it's hard to second guess stuff like that, but, but, uh, but limitations would probably have made, made it much, much better uh, movies. No, I completely agree with that. Uh, that's that's what I thought. Start right, so watching that entire films. trilogy. Of course, you haven't. Of course, mess I've up. I've only seen one Lord of the Rings movie and none of the Hobbit movies. So I'm like wow. a terrible person. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's like that's a whole thing with the Hobbit is that it just feels bloated. Like they just kind of drag it out because they don't have a lot of story with it. Yeah. Unlike the the Lord of the Rings. So yeah, no, I completely get where that's that's coming from. Where I mean, those limitations. Then you're up. All right. So Swagmeister. <laughs> Great name. So, Swagmeister asks, what's the hardest part of your job and why? Hmm. Hmm. Well, mm. I, I, uh, I don't know. I've, uh, I probably love and hate every part of my work at, at uh, 
certain times of the day all the time. But but <laughs> but if if it was to make any sense, I'd probably say that being professional and being passionate and balancing that in the right way, that's probably the hardest part. Because um, especially when you work on something like Bionicle, uh, you have to be passionate about it. You have to be passionate about the characters, about the world, and about this story that you want to tell. Uh, and, and you just, I mean, it, it, it has in its core DNA, it just has this, this sort of, it, it invites uh, uh, for things to, to, to sprout and, 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 and to develop and build and, and, uh, and increase all the time. There's so many paths that you want to follow. Um, but, I mean, you also have to tell a story and you have limitations and stuff like that. And that is being professional. It's, it's taking this passion and, and sort of balancing it uh, up against the, the, the professionalism and, and the task that you're given. Um, but I don't know, you get caught up when you sit and write this stuff, you really, really, really easily get caught up in, in, in just the, the pleasure and the, and the excitement of, of being in that world. And, and you really don't want to go out and uh, uh, go out of that world or start making compromises. But, well, that's what storytelling is all about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's limiting uh, yourself to challenge yourself. Fair mm -hmm. enough. All right. The next question, this guy actually asks a few, so I'll try to, like, consolidate it down. Uh, he's from Dr. Kronos, and he asks, were there any complications during development of the animation? That's his first one. Is there a reason the Skull Villains had no lines? The second one. And his last one is, if you had a chance, slash, were charged with developing the Skull characters, what would you do? So. Well... Mm, I mean, no. We, I mean, the uh, the only real uh, obstacle or, or we had was was the time limit. Uh, I mean, the, the the frame of it, which was you know, well, that was that was the task at hand. So uh, so again, that that just meant we have to be we had to be creative. I think with the skull, as regards to the skull characters, uh, especially in the beginning of of, of the somewhere, they were meant to be sort of you know, pretty much just goons. Sort of like you know, zombie-like sprawls, uh, whatever. Because in that way, you'd have to you'd get to characters or the or opposition that was more and more sentient and and more and more of a threat. So like a hundred skull uh, normal skull fi fighters weren't really that frightening, even though there were many of them. Uh, but but things got worse and worse and worse. So uh, I don't think I'd really do a lot about them. They they just have to be goons. But obviously. A, a character like Skull Slicer, it would be wonderful to uh, to uh, to work on on his story or, or tell his story. But I don't know; he, he could he could have his own little spin-off thing for sure. Yeah, who knows where he actually ends when he's flushed? But that is a good point. Oh so, man, so you think he's still so alive? <laughs> oh, he might be. I mean, he's dead already. So <laughs> <Fair point. laughs> he's probably point. hanging out. He's hanging out with uh, with Loss. When Kulta's uh, yeah, influence I know you've been. ends, because I assume, like, when Kulta got defeated, his influence ends, would he just, like, crumple to the ground? Or would he still be animated? Like, well, like, I mean, yeah. What's your opinion? Well, I, again, I can only speak for what, what the, the part of the story that, 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 that we're telling, but I can say so as much as that we, we had uh, different endings for what exactly was going to happened to Kulta mm. and I would still say that uh, you know he's he uh, he's not um, I mean it's not specific in the animation what actually happens to him at, at the very end mm. other than the fact that he's defeated you're right actually the he gets hit and then there's a flash of light and then we don't actually see the result of that encounter <laughs> so, fair enough that's true alright next question okay so we got uh, got one here from Zelo Hack. Uh, are we going to stay on Okoto, or will we visit other settings similar to Gen One and the fact that we visited many unique areas of the universe? This is where I look very mysterious as I uh, I, I make a little funny nudge with my uh, <laughs> or a funny little uh, thing with my eye. I don't know. I just have to say. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. That's the official answer right there, folks. 
because there was some there was some controversy a while back, and we're probably not going to get into it. A while back, or more riots. It's not like you can share any info on this, even if you did know. But uh, there was a poster that came out of Bionicle 2016 that was in a Lego video on their Facebook page, and there was a certain island. <laughs> On a, uh, the forehead of a mask. Yeah, <laughs> and that was a thing. But was was that supposed to? Could you? Was that supposed to be leaked? Was that supposed to be released? Do you know? Because people, I remember people saying it was leaked when it came out, but it was in an official Lego video. So yeah, we're not really sure like where that was sourced from, but like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I have to admit, I don't know. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. So honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Alrighty then. The world may never know. Next question, Kai. And remember, it's Oniwa, not Oniwa Master. <laughs> okay, all right. Oniwa. Oniwa? I don't know how to pronounce this name. Are you satisfied with the amount of freedom you got while working on Bionicle 2015? The short answer is yes. Very much so. But as I said before, I mean, story writers are greedy. They want to They want to be masses. They want to be dictators of the world because that's... <laughs> what they do so so obviously i mean i uh, i'd love to do a, a gazillion times more but for the task at hand i was actually very surprised at the freedom we were given as as a story team uh and uh, and there was you know uh there was a lot of trust uh given in us our and 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 it was you know obviously there were time frames that had to be met and there were deadlines that had to be met but other than that, uh, I'd say that uh, we we really had the, the freedom we needed for uh, for telling the story. Hmm. Cool. Other than the fact that obviously there were specific characters that we had to uh, to portray and with that we had to introduce, which was obviously the the main uh, reason for even telling stories, introducing places and introducing characters. Very true. All right, then you're up with the next one. All right. Oh, this is a little... Hmm. Okay, first question goes uh, by Dr. Kronos. says, Seeing as you're a screenwriter and likely have little influence design-wise... Uh, oh, wait, what the heck? This is a weird build-up to the question, dude. Come on. <laughs> He's uncertain <laughs> as to whether Merlin Man would be able to answer the question. Okay, okay. Just, just ignore that little tidbit then. Here's the actual question. <laughs> <laughs> um, why do the villagers, not protectors, look identical? And I don't know. I, 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 uh, anything that has to do with the design of the sets or whatever, that's that was way before I entered the, the whole thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't have anything to do with descriptions of characters or, or how they looked or, or whatever. Uh, that that was part of of, uh, of the uh, material provided to us, and that we had to tell from. Right. Okay. And then he also asks, if you were able to design a new character or set in the Bionicle universe, what would you do? Yeah. If I were. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if you were. I, I, I mean, I, if he's actually talking about designing, you know, like Lego designing the the actual uh, build, no. I mean, I, I wouldn't know. I. I don't know how these guys do. Yeah, he's talking about. I mean, I, I play with Leg- I play with Legos. I build with Legos. I and I sometimes I start, you know, ah, and I'm gonna do my own version of stuff like that. And and it just ends up crappy every time. I don't know why. Oh. I don't know how these guys do. It. <laughs> no, but they're. I mean, they're amazing. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting them, obviously, and and uh, uh, and visiting Bilon, uh, where the the designers are, the their creative uh, department there, and it's just like. Whoa. Watching these guys work, you know, you could sit, you could sit there and do that all day. Just watch them work. It's incredible. And no, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. And third question that he asked, final question. Um, favorites and least favorite part of the animations. Mm, yeah, I don't know if we actually touched on that, but I, uh, well, anyhow, I really like the final battle, uh, and uh, greedy as I am, I, as I said, as a story writer, I'd, I'd love to spend, you know, a long time with that uh, uh, final battle. We we had the time we had, and I'm really satisfied with with uh, how how we made it work. Um, least favorite? Uh, well, I don't know. It um, as I said, I, I, I wouldn't say it's. 
I mean, I still, I, I still think it's fun because it's the first time you see the uh, the Toa interact. But the last battle obviously is is a battle that that I thought well would have been fun to improve on that. Fair enough. Okay. All righty then. But at least I mean that's what you guys can do. You know, with exactly. you, you have the set. It's a great set. Which is also another thing that's kind of ah yeah well mm -hmm. the Lost is really a great set. It's great to play with. So I mean, go get there. Design the battle. Well, this one, this next question, it kind of goes along with this trend. I'm seeing a recurring trend about people wanting to know what you would change in the animations. This next one is from <laughs> Tac Two Ten, and he says, if you could change one episode of the animation <laughs> slash extend the duration of an episode, which one would it be and why? Man, so so critical. People are so people can't just be happy with what they get, can they? Nope. Can't just be like, nope, <laughs> man, I'm good. No, okay, <laughs> I'm I, 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 I just. This is because they care, and 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 I I totally get it. I mean I'm and actually it feels a bit like an honor to experience the whole thing from the other side because I'm one of those fans. I mean you should see how I rant about Star Wars or or you know, yeah. anything that goes on. I mean I'm a total rander and and I'm so I I, don't, I I'm a total know it all. No 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 they should have done this they should have done that and then actually trying to be on the other side of of, uh, of the affair and then having other passionate fans react to what you do. It's like it's a total eye opener. It's really fantastic. It, it is uh, and it's it's been one of the greatest greatest experiences that I have because people have been reacting like this. Uh, mm -hmm. If they had been like, yeah, great. I mean, well, yeah, I I wouldn't be criticized, but would I have made a difference? Uh, in in this part, you can feel that that you 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 have done something that actually have have made people respond and have made them think and have made them react uh, right. and and actually try to create. Again, I mean, people who just respond like you stink or whatever. That, that's that's not part of being part of the, the creative community, but the real true creative community of Bionicle, they always respond because they have an idea for something that they want to see, a vision they have, and yeah. being part of inspiring that, I mean, it's just an honor. Hmm. Very true. Okay. Uh, sorry, I hijacked your question, Mess. So let's, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Like there, yeah. Sorry, was there a question in there? Yeah, it was yeah. Just, okay. If you could change one episode of the animations, which one would it be? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's like right. I, I, well, in 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 a perfect world where I just decided and no money constraints or whatever, I'd, I'd love to do that underground scene that we had to cut. I really would have loved to do that. Fair enough. All righty. Cool. I guess I'll do your out. All right, Meso, I've got to ask, is this, does he have master in his it's name? Garnier. Is... <laughs> okay, so it's just Garnera. All right, yes. so Garnera asks, were you given any directions on how to characterize the characters introduced in this wave, Kulta, Slicer, Kimu, etc., or was that all on your own accord? Of your own accord. Whoops. Well, um... Oh, now that's hard to remember because... Decisions about the characterizations were made within, you know, uh, the, the the story meeting. So this this was things that we we spoke about. Hey, let's make him, you know, for instance, Skull Slice. So we want to make him real crazy, and we want to make him just alike. We want to make him uh, uh, hard to figure out what 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 he's going to do and stuff like that. And these were part of the creative ideas that that uh, flew around the room. Um, so I don't know. They, they were part of the team, really. Uh, writing out specifically was what's going to happen was, of course, something I had to do. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Very interesting. All right, Kai, you're up. All right. Uh, so it's from Cerulean, and he asks, "Would you have rather worked on a Bionicle book instead of the animations, or would you rather have written a Bionicle book instead of uh, screen written animations?" I want to do it all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I want to write the movies. I want to write the TV series. I want to write the books. And I want to make the stage play. I even want to make the Bionicle Ballet. The Bionicle Ballet. I would totally watch that. Bionicle on Broadway. Oh, oh, Bionicle man. the musical. Oh, that's great. That was probably one of the best you know, answers I actually, ever. That was great. I think I saw on Instagram that something else that you or that you had worked on also got a musical. Was that was I correct in that? Well, no, actually, I actually uh, uh, I had a stage play premiere uh, about a month ago 
Uh, I actually went and saw uh, saw it tonight as well with some friends, and uh, and that's that's uh, on a book series that I did. They made a stage version, or actually I wrote the stage version as well. But it was made as a pantomime, which means it's a ballet. So uh, so this is this is a storyteller there, and uh, it's in sort of a very comic book like an environment or store or universe. And then you know there's dancers there, so they it's interpretive dance. I've written interpretive dance. <laughs> wow. That's what I'm saying. You know, write, writers are greedy. They want to do everything. Right. Right. Fair enough. That's <laughs> already then. Then you're up. But I think this is kind of a question. Oh, by the way, if I can just say this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If, if I, I, I heard it was from Skibberian, right? Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll just say, I mean, he's a perfect example of one of the uh, one of the persons who've been very, I mean, he's, he's asked a lot of questions and he's been critical uh, about the, 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 the story and the, the animations and stuff like that, but it, always from a very constructive and creative perspective. I mean, mm. to me, this is, this is like a dream fan to, uh, for, 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 for oh. the Bionicle uh, fan base to have. It's a yeah. person like him that, that really invests a lot of thought and time into what he does. Well, hey. And and I thought, I, I think it's very inspiring to read the comments that he makes. Well, if you're going to critique stuff, you got to do it from that perspective. You have to. We 100% have to agree, especially in this case. Yeah. All right, so Ven, the next one for you. All right. So, yeah, I think we kind of did answer this question already, um, but from Adazai... Uh, when creating the animations, was there any cut content or ideas that were scrapped? Scraped in this oh, case. Oh, plenty. Or scraped. They're scraped, yeah. <laughs> they were scraped as well. Uh, no, it, it, that's that's the way it is. Yeah. I mean, that's what you do. I mean, you write out usually at least twice the amount of, of uh, content that you need, and then you start cutting. That's that's just the process. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of, of a lot of great stuff didn't make it in. A lot of pretty bad stuff didn't make it in. Think about that. Uh, so, I mean, and that's just the creative process. Okay. Right. Fair enough. All right. The next one is from Kixar. And the question is, do you have any tips for story writing in general coming from someone who one day aspires to write fantasy books? I actually wanted to ask something like that, too. <laughs> hey. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's, it's always funny because I actually teach uh, story, you know, uh, screenwriting and, and stuff like that. I, uh, I teach at the um, – I do courses at, at uh, – there's an animation school in Denmark, which is actually an international animation school oh, where wow. I do some week, week courses once in a while. I just did one a, a few weeks back. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of books written on the subject and stuff like that. So it's like, yes, there are a lot of tips and tricks and – structure and and ways that you can improve your writing but basically and this is the painful truth of it there is but one thing to do and that is to write uh and the way i'm i mean for in order for it not to sound totally banal i would say that i actually started writing rather late because i was waiting for the right idea i thought idea was the primary thing of, of storytelling so I was like, well, when am I going to get the great idea that, you know, once I get this idea, you know, the store will just be there and I'll just, I'll know. And it never happened. I was like, oh my God, I'm not a writer then. Then I started writing, <laughs> strangely enough, for Disney. And it was very specific tasks that I was given. I was writing, you know, book versions of, of movies, which was, uh, well, the story was there and you just had to start writing. So I started writing and the more I wrote, the more I, you know, the more the, the ideas grew, the more the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the sense of what I was doing was going. And it was like, you know, the more you write, the better you get. Uh, and it's not just, you know, uh, it's not as banal as it sounds. It has to do with the fact that you have to give up trying to control everything from the idea point And you have to get in there and live within the fiction of world that, that, that you're writing. And that's when things are going to start occurring. And that's when you can start seeing if it works or doesn't work. So the, the simple answer is right. Fair enough. Practice and, makes mm-hmm. perfect. And I, I would say, actually, now that we're talking about the Bionicle fandom and stuff like that, write stuff you know. I mean, I know that, that this is frowned upon by many, like fan fiction and, and writing within worlds that are already there. People say, oh, 
then it's not then it's then it's just you know kind of a uh, a, a lesser uh, interesting uh, the thing to do but really i think that's that's one of the places you should start start somewhere where you have passion start somewhere where you know the characters you know the world you care about the world if you write within that framework i mean that's where you're going to start growing as a, as a writer all right good answer all right we have another question here from booster gold mm-hmm. who, <laughs> who is what your name yeah it's a DC character. Who is your favorite and least favorite character throughout all of the Bionicle 2015 animations? Uh, they want to quantify everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, Welcome to the Bionicle awesome. fandom. This is the place. <laughs> no, I understand. And, you know, I'd, I'd want to get these, as I said, you know, uh, I'm a fanboy too, and I want to get these answers as well. I want to know from people, you know, what who do you like more, Han Solo or Luke Skywalker, whatever. So right, I right. understand, <laughs> but I also now understand why they're so hard to answer, uh, because when you write a character, you become that character while you're writing it, and at that point, even though you might find the character despicable or idiotic or or, or, or superficial, whatever. In order to write it, you have to care about it. And so when you're writing the character, well, that is your favorite character. Uh, it just it just has to be or else you can't write it. On the other hand, then obviously the other characters sort of diminish in effect until the time when you start writing them. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden they become the most important character you've ever written. So, um, well, it's not an answer, but it, it's the truth. Sorry, right. Booster Gold. We'll never know. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, that's, a, that, that's a good answer. A great way of looking at it. Yeah. Right, uh, Kahi. Also, Ven, skip this next one and just go to Doctor Cronus's. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I was going to say I'm going to skip a uh, Middle Finger Studios one because we already covered that. Basically, yeah. uh, we already know. Yeah, the on that, that case, just go to Doctor Cronus's. Yeah. Oh, because uh, we already what about- we, we already got to that other one. Yeah. Very early on. We already discussed oh, the Bahi really- and the animation dialogue. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, basically, Dr. Kronos wants to ask, how did the ep- episode scheduling work? Uh, and I, I guess, I don't know if he's talking about the production or the release. I would assume I he's talking about the release, release because of how tumultuous that was with, like, yeah, all I, the leakings getting posted on, like, the other YouTube channels and then them having a schedule for the season two and stuff. If if he's asking about this, the, the release, then I have to admit I don't know. Uh, and I, I that wasn't part of, of uh, what I had to... Uh, to work within, so we just knew we had a deadline for when we we're going to be finished, and that's what we worked worked towards. So I didn't know anything about the uh, the schedule at that point. All right, fair enough. Well, all right, hmm. that's the end of our well, questions. <laughs> that's the end of well, the user questions. I have a, I have one last question. Go for okay. it. All right, how many Bionicle sets has Lego given to you for free, and may I have one? <laughs> 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 uh, I am obviously not at liberty to say. Oh, no. oh. Shut down. No. <laughs> hey. Come it's on, how, how many how many people do you think would be nagging me every day if I, I started telling yeah, you? That's true. Right? It's like, <laughs> hey, can yeah. I have one? Can I have one? There's I... actually one other fan question. That mess so you didn't put in this list that I thought would be hilarious, but I don't know if we have the time for. We have time. Yeah, we're like, we're not even in an hour and a half yet. The last one was like two hours. Awesome. Kazapar asks, can you create a story on the spot with the members of TTV? Oh boy. Each of you says a sentence. Now, we did this a while back on our last Christmas episode, where it's basically ad libbing, was it called? This sounds like a oh, train like a round robin. Thing to happen. So each of us, so each of us, do a sentence. Yeah, we did so this a while um, back, <laughs> and the fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what, what do you think, uh, Mister Man? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> He's like, oh, I, you know what? You know what? The worst part is. The worst part is. I would love to do that, but I know, as I said, writers are just greedy. So. Well, I know there's no way of limiting it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it'll, it will go on forever. That's a good and, point. And, uh, you will kill your audience by doing this. <laughs> so I, I, think, I, think, 
I think it's it's a Pandora's box. <laughs> right. We, we open this. We can't go back. Darn. You know, people will just be people will just be wanting for yeah, this. Well, I mean, this Rowling. just means we're gonna have to have you on again to do it. Yeah. Especially, I just yeah. ah, darn. That's what's just exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> but you know, if by popular demand, it's something we could uh, you know yeah. bring bring back sometime. You should, you know? you should come yeah. on when the Netflix yeah. show comes out and like critique it with yeah. us. <laughs> you can be like like you're another fan. You can talk the other side yeah, of we'll the talk coin, about it. like you mentioned, right? So. I don't. Know, I'd love for that to happen. Uh, once it comes out, Dude, I awesome. Jessica Jones came out, and I binge watched all of that. That was 13 hours, and I had it done within, within 20. 20. <laughs> so I oh, took amazing. several hours off to sleep, and the other parts of that I was just watching. Amazing. Straight. Yeah, I've been watching a good bit of that too. Yeah. So when Bionicle comes out, you. I mean, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be wired. all over that. I've got the real hard hitting questions that we must have an answer to. Yeah, you're gonna buy the Lego slippers? Have you seen (laughs) the 2016 set? And if so, which one's your favorite? (laughs) (laughs) Or which one do you have already? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no. Well, uh, they have not been officially released yet, have they? Uh, they were in the Lego Club magazine, but only two of, only three of them. And, there was a poster that came out that didn't have like confidential markings that was in the uh, Facebook video for the mask contest. Uh, no, well, but because I, I actually have not looked into it Fair uh, enough. yet, because I, I wanted I wanted to wait. Well, I mean, it's 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 more that you know you I want to see the real version first, Makes so sense. I don't get any ideas by watching you know sort of a, a half. Uh, ready thing. So I haven't actually seen any of them yet. Gotcha. You're the kind of person. So I'm trying, I'm trying to. Once also, I like the excitement of seeing the whole thing at once. I, I don't know. It's, You're it's, the kind uh, of person I, I that I would like to be if I had that amount of self control, which I don't. <laughs> so, no, you don't. Like, you don't I, have I, I remember back you in the really day don't. when I was younger, I would go into the store at once and I would see all the sets on the shelf and it would be this crazy thing where I would get a Lego catalog in the mail that would have the whole wave and all their finalized glory. And nowadays, I've become this guy that looks up the blurry, pixelated images well, just because. I don't know it, because of the fact that I, I had so much info on the on the 2015 line before it actually got out there. I don't know. I, I just I just felt as, as, as a being that I wasn't going to work on the 2016, and I'd have to be a fan again. I'd want to approach it being a real fan, you know, and and, and just know no, not knowing anything in advance, but just seeing it there on the right. shelf, Fair you know, enough. getting that feeling that you get, you know, rem- remembering the old good old times when you went into the store and, and yeah, yeah. So, oh man, yeah. Like Ben's talk dream. a lot about that. Yeah, those yeah. precious moments. So I gotta tell you about this dream I had. Oh no! Here we <laughs> go. Oh my <laughs> gosh! <Venom. laughs> It's tradition. No, it is know, not. It's not. But uh, I had my own question. <laughs> I can ask this myself. Shut down. Do you know what was it ever written in the story bible? What exactly are the powers of the mass of creation? Because we were we were talking about this, and we we're like, we don't like Akimu can build stuff without the mask. Like he built his hammer without the mask. So we didn't know was did that give him the ability to create stuff, or was it like? What are the powers that it has? <laughs> well, um, I have. Yes, it's described. The reason I'm stalling is because that I don't know how much of that information is going to be conveyed later on, okay. mm-hmm. and I can't, you know, disclose if if it if it has. So I can only comment on what we've seen so far. Uh, the only thing I can say is that the mask of creation has. Uh, to do with with uh, with the abilities of the masks that that they create, uh, that they can that they can uh, the the power that they fuse into the masks and and the the abilities that they get. So it has it has something to do with that. But um, okay, probably probably I'll, I'll have to not uh, speculate anymore on that because uh, we we should see more of what the mask of creation can do okay uh, later on okay yeah right. that, so that actually brings up another point and ultimate so that's why people hate also... makuta he had no powers when his mask his mask was just like fluff <laughs> mask right. of oh, control man, and the mask of ultimate power i presume are also defined in the story bible mm. correct yeah okay yes correct. Right. okay and this, this actually brings up another question uh 
when, when you do stuff like this, like when you go on the, to, you know, uh, for instance, a fan podcast, or you interact with fans, you need to get clearance from Lego, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. All right, and so... When, when I speak specifically about the line, of course, I mean, I, yeah. I do a lot of interviews and stuff like that on, on other projects, which uh, I, I control myself, but when I speak specifically about uh, Bionicle, I, I, I get clearance from uh, from Lego. Okay, does that mean they have to, like, go through everything Lego related that you're involved in and like kind of sift through it and like have to like no, no I like, mean okay. no it's they're all <laughs> people of, of reason and uh, and, and awesome. a lot of it actually uh, so it's it's like no it's 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 like well you know you don't know, speak about this if, if they believe that I'm I'm a reasonable person and and within you know um, it's just common sense really Right. Uh, and and all they they say is listen that's cool you can you can have the interview but you speak obviously only about the 2015 line because uh, the rest is, is is in the future and so that's that's what we do yeah that makes so, sense for like so it's, not, it's actually not it's, sense. Yeah. They, they do have I mean they can't be less affair obviously they can't because you know uh, they they have a business to run and 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 also it it'll take out the fun of things and really I mean I actually have sort of mixed emotions because in a way as a fan you know I want to know everything as well and I want to see every clip I can from the new <laughs> Star Wars or right. whatever but also it actually ruins my 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 final you know uh, the, the final experience that I have with things yeah so, I totally agree. so actually. I have to uh, have to admit that that uh, I actually prefer these businesses to be very you know tight about their things uh, because you know that or else it'll ruin the the experience that I get uh, at the end. But that being said, I mean the people at Lego, and and I, I would even say how could you not be? But but when you work with something like Lego, I mean it's they're they're, they're just. You common sense creative people, and they understand how the creative world works and how creative people work. And I'm not an, a Lego employee as such, uh, but but I have such great respect for the for the company and, and for the product that they make. Uh, that obviously, you know, I want to I want to um, stay within the boundaries that that makes sense for whatever plans they have uh, coming along. Fair enough. No, yeah, that that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, the oh, there was kind of roundabout way of asking: Do Lego employees watch our videos? No, 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 no. That's not where I was going. Oh, <laughs> that's what you wanted to I know. know. <laughs> Amazing. All I can say is that that uh, from the, the people that I know that I've worked with, I mean, there you would you would see that there's so much like that, like we are. I mean, they they're <laughs> passionate about the product. They're passionate about it. So obviously, they you know they 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 see things online and then they read what people write and they don't necessarily have to uh, uh, to answer. But 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 obviously, it's 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 part of the um, of, of 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 the world. And I think that interaction is such key to what Lego is. That it makes sense. That no, makes a lot of sense. It does. So you are being watched, okay? Yeah, okay. So yeah, we're, we're being, being watched. Well, when There's you put it that way, brother, it disturbs me. Brother, <laughs> That's great. How, how big of a distinction can be between they watch your stuff and you're being watched? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Great. How, can I have one, like, final, final, We don't, we don't final have to question. end. I'm just, like, trying to think oh, of what else okay. I could ask. Hey. Well, I want to know. This is not related to Bionicles, so all our fans can tune out now. But how <laughs> yeah, but how great does that new Star Wars movie look? Oh, right? <laughs> oh, great! Oh man, I'm really trying to control myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've already ruined stuff I shouldn't have ruined, but for myself, and I'm not going to speak about it. But but uh, well, yeah, it, it, you um, know who Kyle I, Fred is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, and let's not you know let's try not to spoil anymore of it uh i had i have to admit i really really had my reservations uh, I, I was one of the i mean i'm so old that i grew up with the first uh trilogy so the second trilogy was was like i mean <laughs> i actually went i live in denmark as some of you might not know but i live in denmark and when the phantom menace came out we were a group of guys that went to new york at that time there was be like I think six months uh, it would go before it actually, oh, three months before it would premiere in Denmark. So we actually went to New York 
uh, and soft no. uh, and we were like we were so psyched and we went over there we bought tickets online which was you know kind of a new thing to do at that point that must have been 99 isn't it yeah, yeah 99 it came out in 99 oh man so uh, so that was like uh, the whole the big thing and well I don't know I don't think I have to tell you the the odd mixed feeling oh yeah <laughs> oh, right. oh, no oh. Oh no! That must have been a long trip back home. I'll say <laughs> <laughs> to this day, yeah, I have not seen so the Phantom I... Menace. Wow! Why, why do you keep commenting on that? We're talking about it. If you don't have anything to say, just be like, "Okay, cool." No, I'm just like, it's, it's, only he's recently have I begun personal. watching the Star Wars film. <laughs> so only recently okay. did we watch. Like, but yeah, the first two. No, but anyhow, um, yeah, but but my uh, my my I, my feeling is getting better and better. I have a I have a good feeling about this. I, I yeah. really do too. No the more, more Lucas, I've seen of it. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those those early those prequels, man. Those are like those are the prime example of nostalgia goggles for me. For a while, as a kid, I saw them as a kid, and I was like, those those movies are pretty good. I oh, like yeah. the lightsabers. <laughs> like, and then I watched it again. I remember like me and my friends were watching episode two, and I remember I remember this like oh, it was like was a, so a moment for me where I was like I'd seen it as a kid and I hadn't seen it in a while, and I was watching episode two again and I was like. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. He's like, I've, I've loved you since I was a boy. And I, was like, Sa- I hate sand. And he's I'm like, what? Who wrote this? That's terrible. <laughs> Who, why did I think it was a good movie? Yeah. So <laughs> that's the nostalgia like the, goggles well, are a powerful thing. Those fans you're talking about, like the yeah. those passionate people who critique a lot of stuff. Star Wars, I think, has probably the most. Uh, dedicated in, in that regard of like people who have all seen it and are like yes this is what needs to be needs to be done yeah. i have one final bionic related question and i think we asked it in the first interview but uh was, now that like the year's over it has to be brought up again <laughs> rest in peace the golden mask of the skull spiders <laughs> you never appeared once <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Loss's golden mask that supposedly has this telepathic link i have to ask was that ever in the story bible um, I um, I yeah, I think I I I have to be honest. I don't remember now. Okay. Because it, I, obviously, as you can tell, it's not in the animations. Obviously, and, yeah, it's and not in it was not either. something that we that we investigated because we our focus was mainly on introducing the uh, the Toa and uh, and I think the whole idea about trying to start. To establish, you know, how he controlled the, the 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 skull spiders and how all these things, it just it seemed a bit irrelevant when you only had the ninety seconds of a visual medium. Mm-hmm. Then starting to introduce this whole mind control thing, it just um, I I I think there would be ways of doing it, but but we chose not to because we wanted to have focus on on the toe instead. Fair so enough. it was never really part of the uh, the t- story development that we did. I'm holding out hope it will appear in the sense. second book because it's skull spider centric. But yeah, your reasoning makes perfect sense. No, I mean yeah, it makes perfect sense. I don't. It was it was just weird to have like a mask that was so. It was very. I guess it wasn't super prominent, but it was there, and it was like it was part of the contest. Like it had was the winning golden version of the skull spider mask. And it was but also that mask the set. never actually. Well, on yeah, the website, it claims that the mask is what allows him to control the skull spiders. But in every other piece of media, it's just Lord of Skull Spiders himself. It has a psychic link without the need of the mask. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I don't know which version is proper. We've also speculated, like, ad nauseum, where did the skull spiders come from? Were they created or were they, like, a natural creature that he's just taken over and corrupted? Or, like whatever and hopefully we'll get an answer Whoa, to that at one point. Once again I have to admit I um we never addressed that and I don't remember if that's in the Bible. Uh story Bible that is. Um I th- <laughs> think we I think <laughs> we sort of assumed that they were like I mean <sighs> we did have we did have some ideas about a lot of skull spiders being underground uh and i think that they probably have lived you know they they weren't just part of the normal uh occult and life at all but uh so so they must have been in 
someplace hidden and then some power has, has sort of uh, made them multiply or whatever or grow in strength or size or whatever. But I have to admit that I, I don't remember if it was there. Fair enough. Hopefully we will get answers to these questions, but if we don't, I guess it's not that big a deal. <laughs> Loss will just be forever doomed to irrelevancy along with his horde of skull spiders. <laughs> oh, well. Well, well, maybe I'll write a piece of fan fiction at one point. Do it. <laughs> that would be incredible. <laughs> if you can, yes, we will spread it. We will take that. And <laughs> Feel free to post it. We'll make a break easy it. Well, yeah, void.t2podcast.com. Speaking of things, you got any uh, got any plugs? You know? Huh. Any audible books, <laughs> right. viewers? I need more. Before we end but, this, like, do you have any other things yeah, that well, you're working on at the moment that you would like to talk about? Well, I'm uh, I'm actually I'm working on a novel right now that has to be finished by Friday, so uh, I'm oh, kind wow. of in a hurry. <laughs> but uh, but it's uh, it's it's going to come out in Danish, and most of the stuff that I do comes out in Danish, so uh, it won't make a lot of sense. But uh, mm. you guys are, I mean, if anyone wants to follow me on Twitter and, and Google translate my uh, Danish <laughs> updates, uh, knock yourself out because I promote all the stuff that I do there. So uh, just follow my Twitter. All right. Fair enough. Well, excellent. Go for it. I'm awesome. Yeah. No. What, what's the? No- yeah. Can you like give us like a like a premise or like what's? Even though we won't be able to read it if we don't. Is it read Danish? The novel? Yeah. Yeah. The novel is just going to be this. This you you're going to love this because okay. it uh, takes place in Russia in Moscow Ooh. and it's about ballet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it takes place at the Bolshoi Ballet uh, Theater in uh, in Moscow. And it's about uh, a, a, a twin twin brother and sister that are uh, ballet dan- young ballet dancers from Denmark that go for a contest. Uh, but uh, all of a sudden, the uh, brother disappears, and the sister has to find him. And he has been, you know, going places he shouldn't have gone in the dark underbelly of Moscow. So it's a uh, it's a thriller for uh, young adults. Interesting. My gosh, that sounds world. really interesting. That sounds really interesting. I can't remember the last thriller I read about that had to do with ballet. To TV Book Club, whatever it's called. Yes, Let's yeah, we should, we should totally do that. Let's learn like Danish just to do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll take Rosetta Stone and we'll learn Danish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it's if it's ever translated, I'll send it to you. I okay. Oh yes. I totally. would also Google Translate the whole book, but I feel that would be rather bootleg. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Google translates isn't that good. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but alrighty. Well, quite honestly, I think that, that is probably all for our questions in this interview. And of course, I'd like to give the floor to you for a few minutes because your involvement with Bionicle in an official capacity has pretty much come to a close, at least for now. And I was wondering if you had anything that you would like to say to the fandom at large. Well, I I think probably I I, I always said it, but uh, I I'd, I'd like to uh, to repeat it, and that is you know stay creative, uh, and and the 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 way this fandom in, is involved in 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 the story behind Bionicle, uh, involved in in uh, in the characters and the, and in the world is such an inspiration for the people who work with it. Uh, so, uh, I mean, keep going, keep going at it. And it's been a pleasure and an honor to, uh, to be part of this. And I'm, I'm going to miss you guys. Oh my, oh. I, you know, I actually managed to keep in my tears all this long time. <laughs> and then you had to pressure it. No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> really, I have to say it, it's been great. And I, I sincerely hope that I'll get the chance to work with Bionicle again. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, it's well, it's, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun. But even, even if it, uh, even if this is the, 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 the end of it, uh, I, I can, you know, I can say I really, really, really enjoyed it. So, and I got to chat with you guys. Hey, yeah. Excellent. And even if it's <laughs> not, miss you. we really yeah. enjoyed both of these talks. <laughs> And even if it's not in an official interview capacity, you're more than welcome to pop on at any point in time. If you ever have like a project you want to talk about or 
if you just want to be part of the conversation. Yeah, you would chill out, like be on a podcast, talk about yeah. random stuff. Do that ad lib we were talking about. Yeah, about the Netflix show. Oh, the, the Netflix show, actually, I I would love to have you on the Netflix show. Heck, TTV talks about Star Wars Episode Seven. Hey, there you <laughs> go. Oh, that'd be cool. So. Listen, guys, I'd be really honored. I would. So uh, stay in touch. I mean, it's it's. We Will got do. the internet, right? You know where yeah. to find us. Heck yeah. <laughs> and we know where to find yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, it's at Merlin P. Man on Twitter, correct? Just for people who aren't following you yet, for some undiscernible reason, you should totally be doing it by now. Don't do it. One year Bionicle, guys. Come on. Dropping yeah. the ball. Yeah. But yeah. Come on. Here's hoping. Yeah. He knows where to find us. We know where to find him. Lego knows where to find us all. Here's hoping they're that watching. you get the chance to work with Bionicle again, and here's hoping that Bionicle gets the chance to go beyond three years. Cause that'd be nice. Six seasons in the movie. Six seasons in the movie. <laughs> I'll take that. So, alrighty. Six seasons in the movie. That's right. That's what we're aiming for. That's what we're aiming for. <laughs> that is pretty much the end of our second interview with the Bionicle 2015 screenwriter Merlin P. Man. Thank you very much for coming on today, and thank you all very much for listening to this. Uh, as per usual, please be sure to leave your thoughts on the comments section below or on the TTV message boards at board.ttvpodcast.com and check us out on Vessel at vessel.com forward slash the TTV channel for one week early access to all of our content. And, uh, yeah, quite honestly, that's pretty much all. So, thank you very much. I'm Messinac. I'm LJ. I'm Kahi. I'm Venom. And yeah, <laughs> Merlin P. Man. Come on, we gotta get him to say his name. <laughs> so, okay, okay, you guys. I, I was just playing with you. I'm Merlin <laughs> Man, and I'm so honored to be on the TTV podcast. You guys rock. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You rock. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, and goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.